Mr. Klimper, are you represented by counsel? Come again, Judge. Have you got a lawyer? No, sir. Don't believe me. Never did. Don't you indeed? No, sir. Well, shoot yourself. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> now then, since this is a hearing and not a trial, let's keep it simple and informal. Miss Claypool, would you start us off? Thank you. Your Honor, the Department of Public Welfare is charged with responsibility of ministering to the well-being of all its citizens, particularly those of its children. The cases of these three children have caused the Department deep concern. Why, the twins live in a home that's hardly more than a breeding ground for delinquency and crime. The Quimper adults are immoral, defiant of authority, and strongly suspected of illicitly obtaining funds from government agencies. And they are also known to have associated closely with gangsters. I shall document each of these charges when the time comes. As part of our proof that the Quimpers are unfit to raise children, I shall ask Mr. King to report on his dealings with the Quimper family. By taking advantage of a technicality, Your Honor, these people set their own interests above those of six million taxpayers. When I try to persuade the Quimpers to abandon their anti-social point of view, I receive nothing but abuse. In the course of which, the elder Quimper boasted that he habitually received relief funds as well as aid to dependent children. I later learned that Toby Quimper served in the army where he tricked the doctors into awarding him a total disability allowance. I use the word tricked advisedly. I can prove that he suffers from no physical disqualifications at all. Anything more? Quite a lot, Your Honor. The Department should like to point out that the Quimpers have no legal status as guardians for these children. Moreover, the Quimpers encouraged two notorious gangsters to set up a gambling establishment in their neighborhood. Subsequently, the Quimpers squalled with the gangsters, burned down their establishment, and finally drove them out at gunpoint. Yes, I heard something about that. Frightening. Terrible. So is the fact that an unmarried girl by the name of Holly Jones lives with the Quimpers in a relationship that I would not care to explore. Goodness me. A terrible thing to say. Be quiet. You will have an opportunity to answer the charges. One final point, Your Honor. As a qualified psychologist, I gave Toby Quimper a word association test, which is designed to reveal basic motivations. It was during the process of giving this test that I was attacked and knocked down by Miss Jones. And you people claim that you don't need a lawyer, hmm? What did the test reveal? Attitudes that were shocking to the entire welfare department. I submit a copy to the court. Well, what have you to say about all this? Judge, would you mind if we hash this over by ourselves for a little while? Hash it over, by all means. Thank you, Judge. You know what I think, Pop? I think we don't look so good. It's up there. She's twisting every single fact. Well, somebody's going to untwist it. Well, good for you, Pop. Not me. I'll get mad, and that won't do any good. You take care of the two of us. Me? I, I ain't very good at talking. We, we, we won't be no worse off than we are now. Please, don't be. Go ahead, son. I don't know, Papa. Please, please, son. Well, I'll probably make a mess of things, Judge, but uh, Pop and Holly here, they got faith in me, so here goes. You may still hire a lawyer. Uh, Pop's already said no to that. Well, Pop's usually right about everything he says. First off, maybe I was wrong when I wanted to throw Mr. King off the property. Very gracious of you. Yes, sir. No need for me to get on, Ray, just because Mr. King got a little nasty. And just what nasty thing did Mr. King do? Well, he tried to throw us off a property that he had no say-so about. About our backs up and everything. Uh, 
Judge, uh, would it be legal like if I were to answer some of the things that were said again me, personal? You may choose the order of your rebuttal. Uh, that means it's all right. Yeah. Well, about my back. Now, they told me at Fort Dix that I strained my back after my first judo lesson. I told the docs that it straightened out after the next lesson and it wasn't nothing to begin with. But they said it was and I had to go on total disability. Now, I'm willing to admit that a doctor might know just a little bit more than me, so I've been taking the checks ever since. But the way it's worked out, I might have done the wrong thing. And if I did, I, I'm awful sorry. Are you defending yourself or making a confession? I'm just trying to tell what happened. Is, is that all right? Well, it's pretty unusual, but go on. Uh, judge, it don't do me no good to talk against people who ain't here to answer back. But all we done to Nick and Carmine was just return a package they left at our house. We didn't know there was a bomb in it. If we'd have known it, we'd have thrown it in the bay. And we didn't chase them off at gunpoint either. When their place blowed up, they just up and beat it. Well, if you can prove that, it takes care of an important point. Oh, I can prove it, Judge, but it, it don't seem important to me. It doesn't, eh? Why not? Well, if I was judge in charge of deciding who was to bring up three nice kids, I'd just be wondering if... If Pop was a good man, and if Holly was was a good woman, you can ask the twins about Holly. I mean, they're just kids, but kids know who they love, who taught them everything they know and made them like it. Uh, dog me, Holly's just a kid, too, but they don't come no better. And smart, too. If it weren't for her, we'd, we'd really be on relief right now or starving to death. I've already pointed out why he'd be prejudiced on that point, Your Honor. I reckon I'm prejudiced on a lot of points you ain't, ma'am. First of all, I'm prejudiced against twisting the truth around. And I'm prejudiced against hurting kids. Particularly hurting them just because I'm sore at their folks. Judge, can I say something? Go ahead. I don't like to say this, Judge. I don't like to talk against a woman's good name. But for the sake of the kids, though, I gotta do it. Well, you certainly have me interested. Hell ain't got no fury like a woman scorned. Yes? That's all, Judge. Well, Mr. Quimper, your observation may or may not be accurate. I couldn't say which myself, but I would like to know why you said it. I said it because it's true, Judge. That Miss Claypool there, she went after Toby like he come with green coupons. She was leaning on him, she was tickling him, she was kissing him, and when he paid her no never mind, she set out to give us what hell ain't got no fury like. Your Honor. I shall not dignify that falsehood with a denial. I should simply like to point out that it is not I who am on trial here. No one is on trial here, Miss Claypool. This is a hearing. Now, do you support what your father just said? I'd rather not answer that, sir. Very well. Briefly, then. Did Miss Claypool ever kiss you? Yes, sir. Really? What do you expect them to say? Or they'll clutch at any straw. Please be seated, Miss Claypool, and we'll have no further interruptions. Continue. Well, I was talking about, about Pop, and that might help you to know the kind of man he is. Pop don't like to be talked about, and I most generally try to do what he likes. I can't help myself this time, though. Now, Pop's an ordinary man, Judge. That's because he's so smart. He can't stand it when people act stupid. I ain't so bright myself, and it's a wonder to me that we get along as well as we do. Many times I was reminded to go against it. I thought maybe there was more to living than just enjoying it the way Pop taught me. But I was never dumb enough to go against him, Judge. And it usually turned out I was glad I didn't. Now, that's a fact that Air Adney and the twins and Holly ain't no kin to Pop. Don't that make you stop and think, Judge? You name me another man and take in three hungry children just because they ain't got no place to go and no one to turn to. Pop ain't got no money. He ain't never had. Why did he take in three strange kids? I'll tell you why, Judge. It's because he's a good man. He's always been good to me and he's always been good to them. He always will be, too. Now, that's all that matters here today. And if you don't know that, Judge, you ain't no judge.
Your Honor, 